Hi, this is Jamie Franklin, curator here at the Pennington Museum. Welcome to another tour at 10. Today we're standing in our Moses Gallery. Um, of course, the Pennington Museum is um, um, the proud um, kind of um, caretaker for the largest public collection of the work of Grandma Moses, or Anna Mary Robertson Moses, as she, um, um, her given name. Um, she was born and lived and worked for much of her um, life um, just over the Vermont New York state border in Washington County. Um, in, um, she was born in Greenwich, um, New York um, and lived much of her adult life in the Eagle Bridge, White Creek area in New York. Um, and so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about three of my favorite paintings um, here in our Moses collection um, that I think give a little insight to who she was as an artist and what she was doing artistically. Um, and they all happen to be paintings that relate very specifically to Bennington, or in the case of this first one that I'm standing in front of, the Battle of Bennington. Um, so, um, as I said, this is really one of my favorite Moses paintings of all time. Um, um, it's just a buzz with energy. Um, um, it was originally actually commissioned by the Daughters of the American Revolution. Um, um, Grandma Moses actually um, um, lived and worked um, um, only a couple of miles from the site um, of the Battle of Bennington, which of course occurred on August 16th, 1777, um, really one of the pivotal battles um, in the American Revolution. And um, so um, she, Moses was interested in history. She would often refer to them as old timey things. Um, and because she lived so close to this site, it was something she was kind of steeped in the lore of the Battle of Bennington throughout her life. And so, um, as I said, she was commissioned by the Daughters of the American Revolution. But when she presented them with this painting, which was the first version, um, the DAR actually rejected it. Um, and they rejected it because they said it was historically inaccurate. Um, and so if you take a close look at it, um, you know, it's, it's all these soldiers, you know, holding um, um, the, the American flag, a cannon firing, um, all these kind of phalanxes of soldiers, the hill, um, which the, um, 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 now the um, New York State Park um, um, battled the Battle Hill, um, but so why did the DAR reject this painting? It looks like, you know, um, um, an excellent rendition of the battle as it was happening. Well, if you look right here um, in the upper right hand um, section of the painting, you see um, Moses actually included the battle monument. Um, and of course, the battle monument wasn't built until the late 1880s. Um, and it was officially um, kind of um, dedicated um, during Vermont's centennial um, in 1891. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, she, there's actually a wonderful kind of exchange between Grandma Moses and Edward R. Murrow um, in a, um, um, uh, a interview um, that was um, uh, um, debuted and aired um, on television in eight, 1955. And Murrow said, why did you include the monument in the painting? And I love Grandma Moses' response because it's kind of, I think, em emblematic and kind of encapsulates her artistic vision. She says, well, I put it in there because it looked good. Um, and it's, I like to refer this to this as kind of emotional realism. You know, Grandma Moses grew up and lived not far from the battle. She knew the kind of landscape. She had heard, she had studied the history of it. She actually probably came to the museum. Um, she often borrowed imagery from other paintings in her work. And you can see this little group of figures um, carrying a couple of people on cots. Um, this is actually based on a painting that's here in our museum collection by Leroy Williams. Um, Moses probably came here, visited the museum, studied um, the Battle of Bennington, and borrowed directly from a painting in our collection. Um, but she also um, um, included things that weren't what you would consider historically accurate um, um, because they're things that she, she associated with the battle. So she's thinking the Battle of Bennington, what what kind of is emblematic of the Battle of Bennington better than the monument, which people come from all over the world to come and see um, that commemorated the Battle of Bennington. Um, she even included um, a reflection of it um, down below in the Sack River, which runs to the corner of the picture. So um, I love that idea that, well, because it looked good. I mean, and that's what an artist does. They're not interested in kind of, they're not documentarians, they're not historians, um, but they're interested in making pictures which um, kind of capture the attention of the viewer and look good. 
Um, so why don't we take a quick walk over here to um, two other paintings. Um, again, in this case, they're actually paintings of Bennington. Um, um, first, this one. Um, again, you, here you have the monument again. Um, the monument, if you're painting a picture of Bennington, you know, Moses, um, the monument is kind of an, an iconic emblem of Bennington. But you also have right here in the center of the picture, the Bennington Museum. Um, um, and this is the Bennington Museum as it looked after our first major edition in 1937. Um, but if you look closely at the painting, just a little bit down lower, you'll notice there's a horse-drawn carriage. Of course, when she painted this painting in 1953, or when the museum looked as it does as she depicted it, um, um, which couldn't have been any um, earlier than 1937, there wouldn't have been any horse-drawn carriages. Um, um, but she was interested in conveying not necessarily a historically accurate picture or a snapshot in time, like a photograph, but giving people a sense of, of, of a place. Um, and anybody familiar with Bennington or familiar with the museum could look at the picture. Um, it's recognizable at the museum. And of course, the monument kind of stands out as this kind of emblem. Um, but, you know, you know, the, the timeline isn't quite right, but that wasn't what was important to Moses. Again, she's trying to get a kind of sense of um, a symbolic picture or an emotional sense of the realism, how she, she kind of connected with a place and how she th thought other people might connect with a place. And then we'll take a quick look um, at this last painting, which is another picture of Bennington, a little earlier than that last one we looked at. This one is from 1945. Um, and again, she um, based w the major element of the composition, which is this kind of group of buildings right here um, in the lower mid-ground, um, um, on a postcard or a fisheye postcard um, that was taken of downtown Bennington. Because of the fisheye perspective, it's a little hard to get a, an understanding. But right here, you're actually looking down East Main Street. This is South Street. Um, so this would have been the Opera Building before it burnt down in 1959. This is the corner where the clock stands now. Um, and this is the corner where, you know, Jay's Hallmark and the new coffee shop stand. Um, um, but again, um, it would be a little uh, difficult to identify this as Bennington if you didn't weren't familiar with the area and you started to think about you know how Moses was thinking about it. She actually lived in Bennington for a short period in the 1930s when she was caring for her grandchild. I think this Gambrel house may have been um, the Gambrel house that she lived in. I actually lived across the street from that Gambrel house when I first moved to Bennington. Um, and you know again she's she's putting in things that she personally associates with, and so again that idea of kind of emotional realism. Um, and, you know, that's what I think Moses did best as an artist, was capture a sense of a place through her personal associations with it and what she thought other people might connect with. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this um, look at Grandma Moses's work and pictures that depict Bennington past um, and her present. Um, and I'll see you again soon for another tour at 10.